Are you a chemical process engineer looking for hydrocarbon dual point control technology? This video is for you. My name is Jefferson Costa. I'm a chemical process engineer with expertise in plant design and I am responsible for the in-process booster training program. In the internet, my mission is to teach you everything that you must know to work with plant design. The idea from this video came from my edition of the gas processing and LNG magazine that I received at my home and uh, verifying the magazine, I saw some, some papers, very nice papers, and I decided to choose the customized selection of hydrocarbon dual point control technology to share with you my uh, understanding, a review of the paper and also my point of view using the point of view of a chemical process engineer that works with plant design. So in this video, I will share with you the main technologies for dew point control. We will see the ice high seas, how it can help you to evaluate the technology or how you can use the ice high seas to start the evaluations of the technology and also how is each one of the main process, how it looks like in the screen of the ice high seas. And finally, we will see, we will talk about the comparison between the main technologies. And I would like to thank Asad Asfak Lodi. He is the author of this paper in the Gas Processing and LNG magazine. I hope that you don't get mad with me for my considerations and point of view related to your paper. And would be very nice if I met you in my in-process interview series here on my YouTube. So guys, enough talking, let's start with the beginning. To begin with, let's differentiate LNG from NGL. LNG means liquid natural gas, while NGL means natural gas liquids. And what are the difference between them? The LNG is the natural gas liquefied. So you get the natural gas that is a gas mainly composed by methane and you refrigerate that at cryogenic temperatures to liquefy the natural gas. On the other hand, the NGL are liquids from the natural gas. So you have a, a gas stream and you have heavier parts or heavy components in this gas stream and you remove them as liquid from your natural gas. So your natural gas will continue to be a gas while you remove the heavier as liquids. And there are many technologies to do that. The main purpose of removing the heavier hydrocarbons from your natural gas is to achieve the gas specification defined by the regulations, local regulations, national regulations, or the contract with your customer. And to do that, there are three main technologies available in the market. The one that you choose will depend on the technology, the cost benefits, and the utilities that you have available to you to the installation of your plant and many other factors. And the three main ones are the Charlie Thompson technology. You have also the mechanical refrigeration technology and the turbine expander technology. The paper Assad does a short description of each technology. He lists the pros and cons, and finally he finished the, the paper with the technical comparison of the technologies. Unfortunately, he doesn't share the gas composition considered for the paper, and because of that, we are not able to replicate what he did in the Aspen High Seas. In any case, with the screenshots that he did, we will do some comments and understand how each technology works. To start the evaluation of the process, you must be able to develop or to build the envelope of your gas stream. And it is in the envelope that you will identify based on the temperature and pressure, where do you have the gas phase, where do you have the liquid phase, and where do you have the Mix, mix between gas and liquid. And to do that in the Aspen High Seas is very easy. It do not depend on the conditions of pressure and temperature. And let me show you right now how you can 
add this utility to your gas stream. Now we are in the Asper High Seas and you can see that we start my simulation with three material streams. One of them is the sweet gas, the other one is the saturation water and finally the saturated gas. And I configure this way because usually the source of information for the sweet gas is from the chromatography and the chromatography will give you the composition of the gas in the dry basis. It do not consider the content of water that you have in the gas. If your gas is saturated in the temperature and pressure, you can add a saturation water or a stream that has water content and mix that in a way that you get the saturated gas based on the temperature and pressure. The evaluation of the gas starts with its composition. So if I click two times in the gas suite, you can see that I didn't add information related to temperature, to pressure, or mass flow, or volume flow, and I did it only the mole fraction of the gas stream. And this composition is based on another stream that I, I got from the magazine. It's not available in the paper written by Assad, but don't, doesn't matter. What to show you is how you can identify the envelope of your gas stream. Once you have the composition, you can go to attachments and click on analysis, create, and click on envelope. When you do that, uh, another submenu will open, and here you can evaluate the envelope in a graphical way or in a tabular way. If I click in performance plot, I can see a graph showing to me the region where I have liquid, the region where I have gas, and the region where I have a mix, a mix of liquid and gas. So my blue line is the view point because any temperature that I decrease from this line, I will have liquid from my gas, and I have the red line that represents the bubble point. So any temperature that I increase, considering this line, I will form the first bubble of gas. And we have the critical point, and in this graph, I am also able to evaluate the formation of hydrate of my gas stream. So if I check the hydrate, I can see which are the temperature and pressure where I form liquid, and I can evaluate which are the temperature that if I reach and I have water in the composition, I can form hydrate. Remember that to form a hydrate, I don't need to have free water. I don't, have, I don't need to have liquid water in the composition of the gas. I just need to have enough water that will crystallize and will form the hydrate. So based on that, you start choosing which are the temperature and pressure for the operations of the viewpoint control system. I don't want to read the hydrate formation, depending on the case, and I have means of mitigating that. One of the ways to do that is doing the dehydration of the gas before I deal with the dew point control, or I can use some kind of inhibitor like methanol to decrease the formation of my hydrate in the gas stream that I have. It's important to you understand that the envelope is a function of the composition of the gas and not a function of the technology used to get the dew point control. For different technologies, if you get the same composition as the final product, you will have the same envelope for your gas stream. This picture was taken from the paper, and here you can see a diagram of the Jolly Thompson technology. In this representation, we have a print screen of Aspen High C simulation. As I told you, I don't have access to the gas composition, so we are not able to replicate that. 
and we have the dry gas with uh, water for saturation and in this case is added some kind of inhibitor in order to decrease the temperature to the formation of hydrate. Once the inhibitor is added to the gas stream, it passes through a plate fee exchanger. Uh, it is a kind of exchanger that use, has a very low approach between the temperatures and it goes to a control valve or a manual valve that breaks the, the pressure in order that because of the decrease of the, temp, the, the pressure, the temperature decreases and we have the formation of liquid. We have the partial formation of liquid. This liquid is collected in a vessel separator. In this case, we have a three-phase vessel separator because it's important to regenerate the inhibitor that I used in the process. And part of this inhibitor is collected, is saved from the process, and the liquid formed during the decrease of temperature is sent back to this heat exchanger in order to cool the gas that is going or pre, do the pre-cooling of the gas that is going to the jolly topson valve. After the pre-cooling, the liquid passes through again in another valve, but only with the purpose to recover some amount of gas. So it goes to another vessel separator, there is a vent, and the heavy hydrocarbon goes to uh, storage or another part of the process. The gas phase from the vessel separator goes to the heat exchanger. And remember that after the Jolly Thompson valve, we have low temperatures. So a way to, in, to do the pre-cooling or to have a heat recovery in this process is to use not only the liquids to do the pre-cooling of the gas, but also the gas phase to do the pre-cooling and consequently to increase the temperature of the gas and send for sales. In this way, you are able to do the control of your dew point, the hydrocarbon dew point, controlling the temperature downstream of the Jolly Thompson valve. Some pros and cons of this technology include for a small high pressure feed gas, Jolly Thompson valve is the technology of choice to yield on spec hydrocarbons dew point sales gas. So it means that you have a gas at a high pressure and you need to deliver that at lower pressure. You can use this pressure drop to get the dew point control of your gas. It has a high turn down ratio. Uh, can be achieved with this technology. Turning down means how much you can decrease your production based on the design condition. For instance, and if I need to produce one ton per, per day of uh, NGL, and I, I am able with my equipment of my control valve to produce 50 tons per day of NGL, I have a turn down of 50%. That is very important because there are some equipment, equipments, there are some technologies that has limitations for how much is the range of operations. So stay aware of that when you are designing your process. It is a self-refrigeration process, so you don't need external me cooling media to do the refrigeration of your process and we will see that in uh, in the mechanical refrigeration technology we need an external source of energy to do that and of course that we as we are talking about decreasing the pressure of the system it requires high pressure drop and pressure that is dropped across the Jolly Thompson valve cannot be recovered. You will not recover that. To recover the pressure, we need to add an external source of energy, and with that, we are expanding 
energy to to increase the pressure so this is a simplest way to do the viewpoint control of your hydrocarbon and how effective it will be will depend the source of pressure that you have in your natural gas and also the composition of the gas that you have. Now let's take a look in the mechanical refrigeration technology for the hydrocarbon dew point control. It is very similar to the Jolly Thompson valve technology, but in this way, instead of having the effect of pressure to reduce the temperature and with that have the leak affection of the, uh, the heavier fractions of the, the natural gas, we use an external source of energy. So in the starting point of the process is the same. We have the dry gas from the chromatography. We saturated that with water. If your gas is saturated, there is the addition in this case of an inhibitor. It can be methanol or other inhibitor to decrease the, uh, the hydrate point of formation. We have a multi-pass heat exchanger to use the recovery of energy in the system. And we have a heat exchanger with an external cooling media. And this cooling media is a closed loop, a recirculation closed loop, where I can use, for instance, nitrogen, the compressed nitrogen. I decrease the temperature of nitrogen, it partially liquefies and I have expansion and with that I get lower temperatures than my natural gas stream and I am able to con partially condensate the heavy hydrocarbons or to liquefy the heavy hydrocarbons in order that I control the hydrocarbon dew point. In the same way I have the three phase vessel separator where I recover my inhibitor. I return my liquid stream that are at lower temperatures to do the pre-cooling of my gas that is going into my process. Again, I have another valve here to do another depressurization. Eventually, I will recover the gas phase and I will send the liquids to storage. My gas phase, it returns also to the multi-pass heat exchanger for pre-cooling of the gas. And with that, I increase the temperature and I am able to send it to the fails. As in the George Thompson valve technology, we have some pros and cons here. In the mechanical refrigeration, we also have. So one of them is that the reliability of the system decreases because now we are talking about mechanical equipments, rotating equipments that are needed to do the refrigeration loop of the system. Here, if we are talking about gas at a very high pressure, it also increases the capex that you need to consider because the maximum reliable working pressure of your refrigeration system must be greater enough to deal with this high pressure. And as we are talking about a utility stream to do the refrigeration of the system, eventually you will need to fill the system again because of losses and you need to have the first charge of your system to do the closer the loop of refrigeration. So based on that, you can, compared to the Jolly Thompson valve, you can have an increase in, your, in the OPEX of your system. Not only that, you will expend uh, money with energy, electrical energy to to run your equipment, your compressor for the closed loop of refrigeration. So these are some of the pros and cons that you find in the mechanical refrigeration technology. And finally, let's take a look in the tube expander technology. In this technology, there is a association of a turbine and also a compressor to reach the desired hydrocarbon dew point control. At the beginning is the same, the configuration. We have the dry gas from the chromatography. We saturated that with water if it's the case in our process conditions. And in this specific case, the author suggests 
two points of injection of inhibitors because we have different temperatures during the process. And in the precooling, as we can have the formation of condensate, we don't want to send condensate to the turbine. So there is a three-phase three vessel separator here to remove the inhibitor, to recirculate the condensate, and to get the gas phase and add more inhibition and send that to the turbine. Because what the turbine does is get the gas at a high pressure and decrease the gas pressure and with that you decrease also the temperature. And because of the decrease of temperature and pressure, we have the formation of condensate and you will control the temperature desired to, to your process based on the requirements for your gas composition, of your sales gas composition. So while in the previous process, in the Jolly Thompson valve, we use the valve to break the pressure and with that break the temperature. In the mechanical refrigeration, we use a closed loop of refrigeration to decrease the temperature and with that to form condensate. Here in the turbo expander, the expander I use it to decrease that temperature and to decrease that pressure. So after that, it goes to a three-phase vessel separator. The inhibitor is removed and recovered. We have the condensate that is recirculated to the pre-cooling. And after that, another depressurization for the removal of gas that we can have in this liquid stream that now is in a higher temperature than downstream of the expander. And we have the collection of the condensates and send that to storage. And now, as to have a uh, expander, it decreases too much the pressure of uh, a gas to have a better efficiency. Now we use a compressor to increase the, temp the pressure of your gas for sales. So the energy you produce it in the expander can be used in the compressor in order to, in, in general terms, it is a neutral use of energy. It's not neutral, but you use one energy from equipment to run the other. How much you are able to decrease the pressure of the system and consequently the temperature of the system will depend on how big is your gas pressure. Because if you have lower pressure in your gas stream, it will not be effective in a turbine because you will not have enough differential pressure to have the decrease in temperature. In terms of pros and cons, Assad lists that turbo expander based dew point reduction technology is mostly used in cryogenic process where LPG or high recoveries of C2 and C3 plus components are required. The major benefit of the turbo expand scheme is the utilization of expansion energy for the recompression of gas. Therefore, the energy requirement for the external cellular gas compressor is reduced. As I told you, the energy produced in the expander is used to compress the gas. And that is needed because we reduce the, the gas pressure too much. The efficiency of complex rotating equipment demands maintenance and operation expertise. Now we are talking about more complex process and because of that, we need to have more specialized people and that impacts the availability and the reliability of the plant. It is a complex and expensive process, so mainly it is used for large volumes of hydrocarbons that you need to control the dew point. With this technology, it's possible to get very low dew point for your hydrocarbon, but on the other hand, as we can be dealing with high, high cryogenic temperatures, you need to have a 
dehydrated gas in order to prevent the formation of hydrates. To finish the paper, we have the technical comparison of the technology. In terms of operations, the Jolly Thompson valve technology is simpler and easier to handle when comparing to the mechanical refrigeration that we started dealing with rotating equipment and more complex is the tuber expander technology because now we are talking about associated equipment. So the most simplest one technology in terms of operation is the Jolly Thompson valve. The next one is the mechanical refrigeration and finally the tube expander technology. In terms of turn down ratio, the Jolly Thompson valve has one of the highest turn down ratio among the proven technologies. The tube expander has the lowest one while the mechanical refrigeration can reach highest high turn down ratio close to the Jolly Thompson valve, depending on the kind of compressor that I use to do the refrigeration loop. In terms of pressure drop, the Jolly Thompson valve technology requires a great pressure drop and to compensate that pressure drop for sales gas, depending on the requirements of the customer, you will need to add a external source of compression and that is not good in terms of energy, the cost of energy of the process. The tube expander also required a higher pressure drop, but as you can use the energy produced in the expander to run your compressor, you decrease the deficiency of the system. And the mechanical refrigeration into your hand, there is no need to pressure drop you will have only the pressure drop associated with the heat exchangers used to remove the condensates from your natural gas. These are the main characteristics that I would like to compare with you related to the three main technologies to do the control of hydrocarbon dew point. That is the Johnny Thompson valve technology, the mechanical refrigeration technology, and the tube expander technology. You can take a look in this paper. It is available in the gasprocessingnews.com. So if you look for dew point, hydrocarbon dew point control, you will have access to the Assad uh, paper on the internet for free. You don't need to do any kind of registration. If you want to know more about chemical process engineering and plan design, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel because here, I teach you everything that you must know to work with plan design. Jefferson Costa, hope you like it, and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye bye.